in here and today we have a car vlog. I am heading to Wawa because I have to draw out some money. Um, I had a family member ask me if she could borrow some money, so I'm going to do that. And I have to bring it to her. I have to go down the shore, which is like by Atlantic City area. So, um, I have to do that, and I figured let's chit-chat. I have not vlogged in a minute. I got to switch this phone around once I stop at Wawa, but I'm driving, so. I am, this is the first time I'm vlogging on my new phone. So, I switched from iPhone to, back to Android. When I got iPhone a couple years ago, iPhone had, um screen recording. Androids did not at that time. Now Androids have screen recordings. I don't know why it looks so dark. Um, so I just went back to Android. I noticed when I film on my main channel with this phone, like you can see me, but the background's really dark. And I think now because I have tenant windows and it's focusing on me, it's not light. I don't know. I have nothing but issues. I like the quality when it does hit me, like the light. And then it's raining and drowsy, like it's very cloudy out. So it's just dark in general. Because if I put the window, see if I put the window down, do you see how the light now? It's light, but because I have tint and then it focuses on me. Sleep for a minute and then it'll go back dark. I don't know. But anyway, uh, we're just going to run with it. Then after I draw money out, I have to go back to Wawa on the way back and get some double dutch chocolate milk. Yes, I did. I don't have to get gas. I went and got gas yesterday. But we have a whole lot. Now, if I could just stay like this, I'd be good. We have a whole lot to talk about because I have not filmed in over a week. I'm sure I already put a video up explaining what happened with Lexi with that scare. Oh my goodness. Um, but I'll talk about it a little bit more because this will go up the next day. Uh, but there's been a lot of stuff going on. My husband came back over with police escort to pick up the rest of his stuff and he did get the deep freezer. So we have a lot to talk about and gossip. So let me go in here, draw some money out and I'll be back. All right, I switched the camera around, but then I feel like I'm way over here. I don't know. You know, when you haven't filmed in a while, you're like all over the place, you know? And then I'm getting used to this new phone. So, I don't know. I think I like it better the other way around. So, let me pull over and switch it around. And here I'm starting to get dark again. Um, this is a hot mess. Let me go around here. I'm trying to think because I have to stop at Walmart and Bella needs her canned food. So I'm thinking, do I want to stop at Walmart first? I don't know. It's 9.38 in the morning. All right, let me switch you around. Hold the phone. See, when I have it like this, I look more in the middle. Do you know what I mean? I'm not like way over. So I just got to remember to look on this side instead of over there. Anyhow, so YouTube problems. Okay. I think I am going to stop at Walmart. I got to make sure I remember to pick up Lexi's medicine. I dropped it off because when we got home last night, we didn't get home to after 11 o'clock. And our uh, drugstore closes at 10 on the weekdays and then the weekends at 6, the pharmacy department. So I dropped it off this morning and then I'll go back and pick it up. Lexi was still sleeping. If she was up, I would have just stayed there and waited for it. Um, she's off work today. They gave her a doctor's note off work today. She has Saturday and Sunday off, so now she doesn't go back to work till Monday. But she was so worried because, she, uh, you know, this she started a new job, and you know, she's like, "What if they fire me? I'm on my 90 day probation period." And I'm like, "They can't fire you. I mean, well, they could because you're in 90 day. They don't have to give you a reason. But this is a med. This was a medical emergency." You know, that'd be pretty crappy for them to do. And as long as you have a note to show, you know, and all that stuff, you should be fine. But, um, so yeah, I thought she had a brain tumor. Now, I'll, I won't get too into detail because I'm sure I already explained this in the yesterday's video. Uh, I will link that down below. I have not filmed it yet, so I don't know what I said. But, um, yeah, 
uh, you know, she was having problems for a long time. Uh, well, about a month, she was having migraines for two weeks. And then after the two weeks, she started having uh, blurred vision, like blackouts that last for like 10 to 15 seconds. Like not blackouts where she's passing out, like she sees black, you know. Um, kind of like a curtain came down and then left. Um, she would hear like hear popping of the ears uh, and she was getting floaters. And she had went to the ER a few weeks ago and they just said, oh, you're probably having migraines and they ordered her naproxen. Well, nothing was hurt, uh, helping and she was eating ibuprofen like candy. Well, come to find out she was never having migraines, hence why the medicine wasn't working because uh, it was the swelling uh, and the fluid, you know, that was causing the pain, right? So, um, anyway, when we went to the eye doctor and they did all the tests and everything, they, you know, seen the hemorrhage and then the swelling behind both eyes, which immediately sent her, we had to go to Philly because, I mean, the first thing is tumors, any kind of mass, anything, anything affecting the brain or, you know, is it just something with the eyes, you know, whatever. Um, so we went, now the hospital we went to, the type of MRI machine my daughter had to go into, they only had one in the whole building. So we had to wait like five hours because each test, every time somebody went in there, the test lasts an hour. So like, right, there were already four people ahead of her. So it was terrible. So anyway, they would go in there and then it takes like an hour for them to even read because it's a big, big hospital. They have other MRI machines, but the one she needed is only one because it's so expensive, right? Anyway, we finally get the results at like eight o'clock at eight, nine o'clock at night. And, uh, and her, her eye doctor appointment was at eight in the morning. So we left the house at seven 30 in the morning. We were gone. Um, but, uh, so she was diagnosed with IH or IIH and it mimics a brain tumor. You have all the symptoms of a brain tumor. Um, but she had, she has fl excess fluid, in the brain and which is causing the pressure and the swelling behind the eyes, which can cause vision, vision issues and stuff like that. But what scared me was when they did the test, they said, usually when we find this, you have to get an MRI within 24 hours. And here she's been having this for like damn near a month with all the symptoms. So, um, it was scary. Like my heart stopped, you know, uh, especially, you know, now that me and my husband were not together, it was just me with Lexi, you know, and it, it was just, I mean, the last scare, I mean, my goodness was just a few years ago. She had open heart and lung surgery. You know, she's only 19 years old. She's only 22 right now. So, I mean, that kid's been through a lot, you know, and you know, she's cried to me and said, mommy, why does everything always happen to me? And, you know, I have to, again, reiterate, you know, our faith and like, you know, you believe in God, right? Yes. She says, I said, well, then, you know, it's okay to be concerned, but you shouldn't worry. Now I know that's more easier said than done, but you know, what do you say to a 22 year old? I don't, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything and say, oh, everything's going to be fine, but I don't want to scare her. So I just have to tell her, you know, keep your faith, you know, everything. God always has a plan. And, um, so, what she has is not life-threatening, but it still is serious. So, she's on medication. She'll take that twice a day. Now, I don't know if it's for the rest of her life. What? We go back for a follow-up. We, we go um, in for a follow-up in four weeks. I guess they give her another MRI, you know, see how that goes. But, yeah, that was pretty scary. See how it goes dark again? Um, and so, for me, to, whenever I say, guys, send me prayers, it's something serious, you know. Because when she was having these issues, the first thing I did, I, like, checked her sugar. You know, I have a sugar machine because me and her father are both diabetic. Her father was diagnosed at 14. I was diagnosed at 18. Um, but her sugar was good. Her sugar was only at 106. I check her blood pressure. Of course, you check all these things that you would think would be what is causing headaches and stuff. And her blood pressure was good. So, you know, then you go from there. And, you know, a lot of people have floaters, right? And then, you know, like the eye doctor said, after a while, when you have, when your brain gets used to them, you don't even realize they're there. But when you're having migraines or headaches, well, she wasn't, they said, like I said, it wasn't a migraine. But when you're having these symptoms with the blurred vision, 
with floaters, you always get checked. Like you don't play around. You 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 know it, it, you know some people they'll, they'll go to a regular doctor, but no, you need to see an eye doctor to make sure it's not something more going on. And thank God we did, you know. But all right, I'm gonna go into Walmart really quickly. I have to get all I'm doing is getting some dog food. That's it, cause. I really don't think I have to get anything else because I am tired because we didn't get home probably 11 30 12 o'clock in the morning and then I really didn't go to sleep and then the night before I didn't go to sleep because I was worried sick about Lexi and then I knew I had to get up this morning and get stuff done so your girl is tired and then I still got to when I get back from doing everything come home and film so I'm just getting the canned dog food that I know of I always say that and then um, that's it but when I get back um, we're definitely gonna talk about some gossip and things like that I just want to let you know about Lexi just in case if you didn't watch the video prior to that but um, I'll be back it's finally stopped raining it's starting to get a little sunny so I just wanted to show you I wanted to see how the video quality is with me filming outside because like I said this is the first time I'm not really filming. I filmed a couple of videos on my main channel, but just in the house, but I haven't filmed like outside or anything like that. So let me know what you guys think of the quality. Is it better? Is it not? I just need to figure out how to work. Um, like when it gets dark in the back, I think because it focuses on me. And like I said, and with the car, it's tenant. So I don't know. And it's like not real bright. I mean, you can see the sky and outside. So we'll have to play around with that, but at least you can see me and stuff, so you'll have to let me know. All right, uh, let me go in here and get the dog food. All right, so here's what I look like inside a store. Now, see, I think I look very clear here. You know what I mean? I need to get a tan because my butt is getting pale. But it's still, it's been a few days of like nice in Jersey, but then it starts raining and gets like this. You know what I mean? Um... But I'll turn you around and show you what I got. Her, I got a few cans for Bella. Oh, a little too up and close and personal. And I got some treats. They like this uh, peanut butter one. I always, I never get raw high, so I always get raw high free. But all right, let me um, pay for this. I'll show you really quick what's in the car. Of course, I didn't bring a bag, um, but I have bags in the car. Oh, you know what? The dogs really liked. Which one was it? All right, I, I need to stop. All right, I'll be back. Very quickly, here is just a few cans that I got. Of course, I got my hair dye, but um, I'm gonna look real quick and see if I can find something soft for Bella. So I spent $122 right there. Let's see if this, re oh, look how clear this reads, $122. I lied. I got a few more things than dog food. Well, I got a few treats and stuff. One of the treats was like $28 for the bag. It's like this jerk, beef jerky, you know? Um, but I got some like cookies and different like snacks for Lexi. I don't know. I just, I just feel terrible for her. Okay. So now, is my air on? Okay. So now I'm on my way to head down the shore. But let's do a little talking. I had to be careful not, well, I wasn't going to get anything frozen or anything like that because I'm not going right home. But I had to be careful not to pick anything up because let's talk. So I told you guys before when my husband came, if you don't know, I am, uh, and I'm, I'm separated from my husband. And uh, he had came before with police escort to get some of his stuff, but he didn't get everything. Okay because he like just had his car and he just put what he could fit in the car and it's like why even anyway i don't know so i understand why he brought police escort like i understand because you know him and my son got into an altercation and i mean it was pretty bad you know my son got arrested and different things so i get it not that anything's going to happen now it was just the heat of a moment but just in case, you know, say, you know, my husband says something slick or Tyler said something slick. And I, and, I, and I get why he did that before. But this happened beginning of March, him and my son. I mean, we still have to go to court and stuff. But it, it's like, I don't know. So Father's Day, 
the day before Father's Day, he texts me and wanted uh, to come over to get some of his stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to be home. And not only that, like, you need to let me know. Like, don't text me at night. And no, you got to let me know a few days in advance or whatever. Because if I'm working or anything, I I'm, I'm sorry. But you're on my time now. So, anyway, we finally make plans for him to come. He was supposed to come at 4 o'clock the, the other day. He didn't come. He was running late. Then he said he wouldn't come. To, he wouldn't be there till like 4.40. And then he said he had a few meetings. And I, he was like, I'll come after that. So, that was like 8 o'clock at night. So, I'm like, if you don't come at 8, then we're, we'll have to reschedule. And I don't know when I'm available again. So, at 7.59, my doorbell rings, right? And I look and I see it's a cop. And I'm like, okay, that's strange. So I answer the door, of course, and the, the cop, he says uh, my name, you know. And then he says, you know, my husband's name. And he says, you know, do you, he says he's coming here to get uh, some of his stuff. And I'm like, yes. And he was like, um, he said there's been an altercation, you know. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know. Like, I didn't know he was, which I don't care if he called police escort. But it's like, I don't know. So, I tell my, my son was home, because it was at, it was 8 o'clock at night. I tell my son, just, you know, stay in your room, which he would, he was going to do anyway. My, you know, my husband comes in, and the first thing he grabs is a deep freezer. And I already cleaned it all out, because he did purchase the deep freezer, but that's the only thing, appliance, that he has purchased in that house. And to take it, and I specifically, on purpose, have not went grocery shopping, which we have food, because we have a refrigerator and freezer, right? It's like side by side, you know, the one whole thing is the freezer. I have food in there, but I knew I had to bring whatever in the deep freezer in there, whatever. And I'm thinking, you really didn't care about me because as much as I, you've always eaten the food that I purchased. I always bought. As much as I blogged, you guys know how much I used to go grocery shopping, and I used to even show you how much I spent, so you knew how much I spent, right? I mean, I'm spending seven, eight hundred dollars a month at least, you know, on food, and he ate more than fifty percent of it, probably almost seventy-five percent, and that's no, no, like, shade. It's the truth. And I'm thinking for eleven years, I've, I, I, I've been the one paying the electric bill, this, that, the cable bill, the internet you've been using, but whatever, you a couple hundred dollar freezer you want to take, knowing it's me and my kids. You supposedly you don't have your own place. I mean, what do you, you know, I feel he probably is go, going to sell it. I don't know what he's doing, but what, regardless. All right, so take it. You want to take it, take it. Because, you know, Tyler, my son, already said, Mom, don't worry about it. I'm passing a cop, and every time I see a cop and I know I'm okay, I always feel like they're going to pull me over, especially having all this tent. Um, anyway, so. He, uh. <laughs> looking did, did they turn with me um so you know Tyler was like mom let him take it I'll, I'll buy a new one you know it but it's the principle right so he because I never unplugged it to let it melt or anything I'm like that's on him so he unplugs it he carries it himself you know takes it then I see him going into the shed out back he goes and gets the manual lawnmower now I, I already bought a new like regular uh, lawnmower. So I don't care. You want to take the manual lawnmower? Like what grass do you have to cut? But whatever. You want to be spiteful? I mean, what was that? 40? But whatever. Take it. But when I went in, I was passing because I was going to get, a, I was getting a bottle of water. I seen he went and took a big bag of rice that wasn't open. It was like 25 or 30 pounds that he had purchased. But we always get lots of bags of rice, right? As I always think he there's a food shortage or whatever. So I'm always like packed, stacked with rice. He literally takes it. Because he had these boxes that he bought from Home Depot. And I'm thinking, oh, that's being petty. You're getting, really? You're taking, but go ahead. Then he takes the fabric softener. Then he takes uh, Metamucil or whatever. Like, you know, I say, and I don't even say anything because I don't care. Like, you think that's hurting me, you take it. I just see how petty you are. And I see that I made the right decision. And karma does come back because he'll get with somebody that will take advantage of him trust and believe you know so then uh like i told him, you don't even need boxes i already packed his stuff up so then he went upstairs and in the cl in his closet you know he takes all his stuff you know he didn't really have that much left to take so he takes everything so like now and i gave him the title to the car and all that stuff and like i told him i said 
Now, there's still two cars in the back. They don't run, but he needs to get them. And I'm like, because he's got everything now. He doesn't need to come back. And then in the backyard where, you know, where the alley is, whatever, you know, he doesn't, you know, he can just get them towed. He's like, well, the titles are here. I said, I don't know where the titles are. He said, well, I don't have the keys and I need the title. Get the keys. I'm like, well, you need to figure something out, but get them towed. Because I'm, I'm not, I'm not a storage unit. You know what I mean? Like, you take the cars. But, you know, it's just to show me how petty. That, it, it's crazy, but, you know, it's not hurting me. You know, like... I could never do that if, if I was a man or even a woman. Say I'm walking out of the, the like, you know, I, I want to leave the marriage and I'm leaving. I'm not going to take a deep freezer knowing there's food there and there's kids there. Even though I know my kids are grown. But I'm still not going to do it knowing if my husband paid just about all the bills and different things and took care of me. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I live there rent for, I, I wouldn't be that petty. But some people are. And see, you have to answer to God for that. And you have your karma. You have consequences. And, you know, now I could have stopped it because really, legally, the cop can't allow him to take that because that's something that we take when we go to court through our divorce settlement. You're only allowed to take, like, clothes, you know, like personal items. I could have stopped it, but I didn't. And I'm like, let me just see how petty you are. Really? You can't afford to get fabric softener? But whatever, I mean, you know, so I, I, I don't even think twice, like, you know, I, I can't, like, uh, let me give you an example too, that, that kind of sucks, right? Because now, like, I was in Walmart and I had a guy try to talk to me, it wasn't really my type, but even if he was, I'm still legally married, so I will never, if it takes three years to get the divorce, I'm not going to see anybody go on dates, give a man my phone number, because in God's eyes, that's still adultery because you're still married until you're divorced you know and in and, and my eyes and in God's eyes too you know it, it's, it's it's the truth you know there's no separation or whatever you know you're still married um whatever he wants to do that's on him but I always tell these women how you get them is how you lose them you know so you mess with the married man even if they're separated I mean if they cheat on you or whatever I mean you know that that's whatever um but I don't even think twice, like, will this work? Will it never? Like, well, I already knew that when him and my son, and then, like, he put charges on my son when, let's keep it real, we could have put charges on him, but we don't do that. We don't involve the government. We don't, we, we just don't do that. Um, that right there, it, you know, was, was the end of that marriage. But... I wouldn't even, I, I, no. You know, even if like, you know, I have people ask me, you know, like, well, what if him and my son didn't get into it? I still wouldn't. How, how long, to, 11 years, how long should I put up with a man not paying any bills? And me doing everything. And he's okay with that. No, no. You know, a man's only going to do what you allow him to do. And I allowed this, right? So... But, uh, so that's that. So now there's nothing we really have to talk about. Now, when Lexi did have her health scare, um, Lexi did get a hold of him and I did, I told him because I needed with the insurance and whatever, it doesn't matter. And he did text to see how she was doing. And I was very civil because I had to do with the kids because he has two kids that are my stepkids, but I look at them like my children, they're all grown, but God forbid something happened to them. I want him to get a hold of me and tell me because that's different. That's involving the kids, right? Um, but I'm very civil, you know, and then when we got home, I just told him what she was diagnosed with, blah, 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 and that's it. You know, no, no, there's nothing to talk about. I'll never talk to him unless there's something to do with the kids or something like an emergency or something like that. There's nothing to talk about. And I'm okay with that, you know? Like, I could never be his friend, ever, because just right now how petty he was to take a deep freezer, to take a bag of rice, like. I mean, how petty is that? When was he going to do? Sell it? I don't know. But it... it I, I don't know. It's just, it's just whatever. So that's that. I really haven't been on YouTube, but when I looked on YouTube, oh my goodness, how much drama have I been seeing? I know there's a lot with Jessica Kent. That's a whole nother drama that I'm not even going to touch. Colleen Ballinger. Oh my goodness. I mean, they canceled Shane Dawson. Like, what? What? It, 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 uh, 
that'll be another video I talk about just in case you don't know. Like, just on a coffee talk, you know. Um, what else? Uh, and then, like, just YouTube drama that I see going on here and there. And it's like, you know, I've always said this, like, karma comes back around to us, right? It, it does. Karma is a right and when you do wrong when you gang up on people like I had something happen to me literally weeks after my heart attack and a stent put in and I had a few people I at that time I would say ganged up you know whatever I don't know if you want to say ganged up but they got whatever and I plead it leave me alone let me heal because it really like you know it was stupid things like my health was more important but when you're ignorant and mean, it, it comes back around. And now that people are ganging up on you to show your true colors, and I'm just talking, and this is just for any, it doesn't even have to do with YouTube. But this is why I talk about karma and consequences, and it comes back to you. It may take a week, a month, a year, 10 years, but it will come back on you how you treat people. Just like I've said this before, if you don't like somebody and you're gloating because of their struggle and you're like, ha ha, it will come back on you. It, or maybe not you, but maybe on your kinship, like maybe on your, your offspring. Could happen to your kids. Could happen to your grandkids. You, you don't know, but it will come back to you. You know, what you put in the universe comes back. So if you put good out there, good comes back. If you put bad out there, you get that karma back. Now, karma could be good, too. You know, you can have blessings, but it could be bad karma, too. So be careful how you treat people. When you make fun of people when they're sick or don't believe that they're sick and then it happens to you, you can't sit on YouTube and cry because, you know, prove that you're sick, right? Like it happened to me. I was told, well, we know she was in the hospital. We don't know what for. I mean, do you know what I mean? It's so stupid. Like, you know, so that's coming around and I don't gloat and I hate that for her. I hate that when I am talking about a specific person and I just hate it in general because I know how that feels that videos made or uh, you know it, it doesn't feel good but I am also it's one to say take accountability I've always I've said this from day one I wasn't always a great friend as far as like I shut down when I'm going through things and I don't talk and uh, or I, I you know when I was grieving I'm still grieving but like really deep in my grieving I like was very neat, like negative, right? I mean, like the weather like this, and I would be like, oh my God, it's raining, you know, or oh, it's so cold in my house, something, like I always had something negative to say. Um, it was terrible. Uh, I vented a lot. I ranted a lot. I complained a lot. I can admit that, you know, because when you're going through that, you don't realize how bad you really are, right? And, and that's the truth. And oh, this is going to bother me how dark this is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull over really quick and I'm going to film on my old phone and then just clip it together because at least it'll brighten me up. Uh, since it's not sunny out anyway, I won't have those issues with the other phone. Remember when the sun and everything would, would like um, get in the way? So let me do that. Let me pull over and uh, switch phones and stuff because this is bothering me. I'll be back. So what was I talking about? Um, I have no idea what I was talking about. Uh, but, you know, like, uh, that's all that I want to say. Like, you know, it's just like YouTube drama and then beef and all that kind of stuff that it's, you know, like what happened with my child? It just really made me think, like, YouTube is not my life, you know? Um. I remember before people would make videos about me or something like that. I used to get so upset and it used to bother me and to where I couldn't even watch it. Like, but it's like when you're going through that much or you're allowing things for you to make video after video after video that that's that you can tell that's all you're thinking about. That's all you're, you know, you're putting your energy into that. Shut, shut it down because it doesn't matter. Unless you're doing it to get the views and to make money and, you know, that's, you know, that, that's different. And I'm not judging you. I'm just, I'm, I'm saying, like, if it's not bothering you, if it's not getting to you, you're just making videos, talking. That's something different. But when you're, like, so angry and different things, it's like, uh, get out and take a walk, you know? 
this I don't care like there's a youtuber that's really upset because I guess supposedly somebody talked about her son and I get it it would piss me off too understand when I had people talk about Lexi when she had open heart surgery and different things on this thumbnail and this all this other kind of stuff I'm not gonna get involved I was pissed because I'm like who I don't even care you're gonna bring up my daughter in your video like it just pissed me off but now it's like who cares I if, if somebody was talking about my video I mean my child and let's say you had a mental illness or whatever the case may be yeah I probably would say something in a video you know well you guys know I would because I do my rant sessions right and I might talk about it a few because, you know, sometimes I can't let things go right away. Like, if it bothers me. And I might talk about it in a few videos. Like, I wouldn't make dedicated videos. But, like, in a vlog, I might talk about it, like what I'm doing now. But then that's it. I'm not going to allow it to, like, keep going where I'm doing community post after community post. And then, because then it's too much. Because, really, what people say don't make you shit. Let's keep it real. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter what other people say. It doesn't matter. That doesn't make who you are. Remember that. When people talk about you or they make fun of you or they're gloating, that that's a, that's a them problem, not you, right? And so that's just my opinion on that. Like, get off the internet. Don't allow people to get to you like that, you know? Say what you got to say and then let it go because it's, it's, it's... Because when you do that, especially... When you show your weakness, when you show people what bothers you, I tell this all the time, never show your weakness. They you will use that, especially if they want to get to you. Well, if you are saying and, and showing, oh, you're saying these words or you're talking about my child, they're going to keep doing it. It's not going to stop. Right? It, it, there's a situation that I see and I feel sorry. Her name is Tara Nicole. Me and her had her issues, but she's, I have nothing against her. And now, I mean, she puts it in her video. She's homeless. She's living in a park. And this one disgusting guy, Roadhog, he's the one that last year, him and his wife lied about a pregnancy and all this other stuff. And he's just gross. And, like, he makes fun of Tira. And, and, and Tira says things about him. Don't get me wrong. But he knows that that bothers Tira. He knows that because he knows if he just says something, Tira's going to make a video. Right? And it's giving him content. And he's loving the fact that it's getting to her. So he will keep it up. And it's like, in my opinion, if Tira should just ignore him, and then he has nothing to talk about, right? But he enjoys that because she, what, what, she showed her weakness. She showed that it really does bother her when people say stuff about her or different things, right? Otherwise, she wouldn't let it get to her and she wouldn't talk about it. But that shows how gross he is to make fun of somebody homeless. Like, he literally made a video and was like, I'm outside because I choose to be outside, not because I'm homeless. And it's like, you don't know what can happen. Because he rents, he says that, he says he paid his rent and all this kind of stuff. Like, what if that landlord, landlord sells your house? What, anything, I, I, whatever the case may be, or something happens, God forbid, a tornado, hurricane, I don't know where he lives, but like, something, a fire happens and you lose your house like you don't know what can happen you don't know your job can shut down something can happen you don't know we can go in effect with COVID again or something happens another pandemic you don't know what can happen you can get into a car accident god forbid or your family or somebody that you care about and you have to stop working whatever the case may be you don't know what can ever happen so you don't gloat and make fun of people because you don't know what can happen to you. It's gross pig behavior to make fun of someone. I don't care what, I don't, if it's my worst enemy, I'm never gonna make fun of somebody for being homeless. I'm gonna help. No, that's disgusting. And But that just shows who he is. You can't let that bother you, what he says. Fuck him. You know, because he'll get his consequences. I mean, we don't know what, you know, he says he has this good marriage. Well, we really don't know what his life really is. He must be very miserable because he can't have a great marriage. He can't have a great life if he spends all his time on YouTube talking about other women and making fun of them. And that's the truth. Because when you are have a good life and, and you're in a good marriage and all, you want to spend time with your wife, you want to spend time with your family, your kids, you, you, you don't care about YouTube drama. You don't care about, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So, uh, that's a him thing. And that's what I'm just using that as an example. Uh, you know, don't, don't, you can't let YouTube get to you. I know it's easier said than done, but you can't, you know? All right. So now I'm just talking to talk and I don't know how long 
this video is. I know I got to stop saying that, but I, I still have about another 15, 20 minutes to get to her house. So I will come back after I leave, drop this money off. It's 1035, so I'll be back. All right, I'm back. I'm not gonna stay long. It is almost 1230 and I, you need to get back and get Lexi her medicine. I'm talking and talking and talking because I've not seen my aunt and my cousin and my uncle in like two, three years. So it was nice to get back in that, like talk to them and how they're doing. And I'm like, you know, I wish I could stay longer, but I need to get back. Lexi needs her medicine and stuff. So, cause I do not want her driving while she's having these headaches and all that type of stuff. But that was so like, it was so nice to do because it's just been me and my kids. Do you know what I mean? All right, so I'm gonna get off of here. I'm gonna listen to my music. So I'm gonna say my goodbyes now. Please like this video. It really does help me out or dislike it. That helps me out as well. Make sure you leave a comment. Commenting really does help me out even if it's just an emoji. I have this on sport mode. Let me, um. okay, take that out so you, you don't hear all that like, you know, noise. Anyway, uh, anywho, stay beautiful, stay blessed, stay healthy, and most importantly, always stay you, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Don't forget to let me know what we talked about, because I talked about a whole lot of stuff today. You can tell when I haven't filmed for a while. All right, bye, guys. What I need. Come into my boyfriend. Dirty, dirty boy.